In this just-in-time microlearning, we'll go over some tips for helping to minimize the impact of COVID-19 pandemic to your clinical trials. We won't cover every event, but we will discuss what to do in the most common problems due to this pandemic that you will likely have in your clinical trials. And this will help you to analyze the best approach forward for your particular case. Remember, each trial is different, and a solution for one trial might not be the best for another, but we'll try to break down different scenarios to help guide you through the uncertainties of this challenging time. The first thing that should be done is to perform an assessment to analyze the potential risks for your study. What sort of items should be discussed during this assessment? A simple approach is to follow the three P's. Discuss the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on people and patients. That is, think about the people involved in the trial, the study staff, and of course the patients or subjects participating. Think about processes or procedures. That is, what procedures could be affected by this pandemic. And product. And this has to do with the study drug and comparators and the logistics surrounding it. And if you had this discussion using this 3P approach, you're probably going to come up with at least the following five scenarios. Here are the five most likely scenarios of where COVID-19 pandemic may affect your clinical trials. First and foremost will be that due to country lockdowns, patients are hearing the news and telling themselves to stay away from hospitals, not to go to their general practitioners, and this causes the patients not to actually go outside, but also to become fearful. And so clinical trial research patients or subjects won't be allowed to come to the investigational site for their study visit. This is expected, and many governments have already posted information on their clinical trial websites that they do expect an increase in protocol violations because the patients aren't actually going to the study visits. We'll discuss more on that later. Related to this, is the need to assess the safety of the patients in the study, as well as proper reporting of any subjects contracting the virus. Another item is what should be done about drug dispensation, return and accountability if the subjects are not returning to the sites. And we'll also tackle the effect on study staff and sponsor staff as well, and what can be done with the known increase in homeworking. And lastly, we'll discuss the best way to report and document the reality and how to manage it. As we've said, though, each study is unique, and therefore these suggestions won't cover every situation. We do strongly recommend that both sponsors and investigators take that time to perform a benefit-risk assessment for themselves on how this pandemic might affect their specific study, especially the safety of the subjects, as well as the study data and analysis. The likelihood of study subjects missing or delaying their study visits, especially at this moment, is so high that we wouldn't be surprised if every single one of your clinical trials have had an impact or delay because of this pandemic. The first thing you can do is to suggest to your investigators, if they haven't already done so, to contact each and every study patient of theirs to explain the best course of action for their particular study. If it's a short-term study, it may be critical to organize to assess the subject by phone during a normally scheduled visit. But if it's a long-term study, it might be better simply to cancel the visit altogether, provided that they have enough study drug to get to them through to the next visit, but more on that later. So here's some suggestions. Have the site send out a patient newsletter or email or phone call, depending upon what data was collected during the consent form, and outline what the study patient should do in this case. And depending on the study, either postpone some study visits or cancel them altogether, or organize virtual visits. Investigators can make alternatives to in-person study visits, such as telephone interviews or even home visits. Perhaps consider partnering with pharmacies or local healthcare settings to assist in some of the procedures, such as EKG assessments or blood draws. And, for the future, Start more actively thinking about decentralization of your clinical trials by using the newer technological platforms without jeopardizing monitoring of the safety of study subjects. 
Note that inpatient studies have their own unique situations as well. We recommend that any phase one and healthy volunteers be postponed. Most likely, this is what's happening anyway. High-risk studies, which impose close safety monitoring, should also be postponed. For ongoing studies, the sponsor is to assess the impact of COVID-19 to the safety of the study subjects. As we always stress in our other microlearnings, the safety of patients in clinical trials should always be our first priority. Fortunately, we live in an age of technological connectedness, whereby there are a lot of tools available to allow for virtual study visits and to perform safety assessments remotely. And so if this is a low-risk study, the investigator should contact each study patient for remote study visits and safety assessments. For regular safety monitoring, such as blood tests, the sponsor can partner up with local healthcare settings to assist with procedures under the condition that the confidentiality of data is protected. However, if because of the design of the study, missing or postponing a visit could have a serious safety impact on the subject, for example, if a critical assessment or an analysis will be missed, then discontinuing the subject might have to be considered. Furthermore, sponsors should discuss whether to halt the trial altogether, especially if it's in a study population that can be immunosuppressed or a drug product that has an immunosuppression action, but this should only be done after a risk-benefit analysis has been performed. Sponsors and investigators must consider whether the study population should be considered a high-risk setting or not as well and may proactively delay or cancel study visits as mentioned in the previous section of this microlearning. If an investigational site wants to modify study procedures to assess for COVID-19 symptoms or test for the virus, then this constitutes a protocol amendment and should go fast-tracked through their IRB or ethics committee, and the consent needs to be updated with this new procedure. If a patient or study subject cannot access the hospital or where this is not desirable to do so, It's permitted that the medications for research are sent directly to the patient. This is the responsibility of the principal investigator. The sponsor of the clinical trial may not intervene in this process for privacy and integrity reasons. Of course, the right shipping conditions must be respected, and the process must be documented and fully traceable. Fortunately, again, for our Amazon or FedEx approach to almost everything, It's no longer cumbersome or risky to deliver study medication by delivery services, where the reliability and the transparency of the shipment is now easily accessed. Thus, your study sites can consider shipping enough study drug to their patients, ensuring proper randomization and blinding procedures are maintained via their national delivery carriers. Don't forget that there are many services that ensure appropriate and well-documented temperature control of packages as well. There is a lot of homeworking or teleworking being authorized right now, and many travel plans are being canceled. This means that scheduled monitoring visits are likely already being canceled, but still they must be documented that there has been contact between the investigator and sponsor. In fact, we recommend a documented email and phone call from the sponsor's representatives to each of the investigational sites to show due diligence in proactively discussing responses to this unprecedented situation. You should contact each one of your study investigators and ask whether they believe that they will have a shortage of staff due to the coronavirus. This could be because some of their staff are sick, or they're working from home, or they've been called to work elsewhere in the hospital to cover for a staff shortage elsewhere. Whatever the reason, go over with the investigator ways to minimize the impact and remind them that if they bring in replacement staff, they must have documented training to ensure all new staff are qualified. So how is the best way to document these deviations and protocol violations that are likely to occur? First, the sponsor should not be issuing any sort of blanket statement or prospective protocol waiver. Protocol waivers are sometimes seen where an investigator gets permission from the sponsor beforehand to not follow the protocol, but this has never been an acceptable action, nor is it acceptable now. Most ethics committees will ask to be notified of any substantial protocol changes, and in the EU, whereby the sponsor notifies the central leading ethics committee, it might be helpful 
to inform the Central Ethics Committee the likelihood of missing visits and protocol violations. Also, don't forget to obtain consent from the patients or subjects, especially if you're using their home address to ship study medication to them. Performing the protocol assessments remotely or virtually, if not part of the protocol, will require an Ethics Committee approval, but most likely this can be done as an expedited review or can be implemented immediately in those cases where this change eliminates an apparent hazard for the patient. In addition, many regulatory authorities understand that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, there will likely be a significant increase in protocol violations due to subjects and patients missing trial visits. So in such cases, they may be considered to be a serious breach and reportable. We won't go into serious breaches now. ECCRT has another microlearning specifically on serious breaches, but just we want to let you know that some of the regulatory authorities, such as the MHRA, have posted an acknowledgement that the increase in protocol deviations due to missed visits will not be considered a serious breach at this time, and thus it doesn't need to be reported as such, unless, of course, it causes a serious safety risk. We recommend to postpone the first patient first visit of any study that is likely to begin within the next month, except, of course, those that are related to the coronavirus vaccines and assessment kits. We recommend also to not allow investigators to alter the protocol's inclusion-exclusion criteria, as any major violations would still be considered a protocol violation, and if they have a safety impact, it could be a, considered a serious breach. There are also statistical considerations, which we're not going to be covering here because they're too protocol specific. Suffice it to say, you should already be in discussion with your study statistician to discuss ways to minimize the impact of study visit delays and missing data. One such, such possible impact would be to require additional study subjects to be randomized if the number of missing data is significant, but your statistician will have to calculate this. This is a rapidly changing environment, and our recommendations are based on the current situation in mid-March. Please be aware of any country-specific advice for managing clinical trials in this time of COVID-19, so always check the information from your local competent authorities.